Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for still staying with us. Uh, my name is Wang Yi. Actually, I'm working for Pivotal. Oh, I'll say I'm working for... In fact, you guys already met up. If you don't know who, what Pivotal is, what the company does, I think you already met up Sergio, met up uh, Michael, met up uh, Carlos. They're all my colleagues. And uh, I don't come here quite often, but today, Michael C. You know, Cloud Foundry is a very big community. You're going to show some faces, which is a new face that's going to grow up. And, you know, instead of only see Carlos and the Sergio. So that's the reason I'm here. Uh, and uh, the topic I'm going to cover, which is uh, uh, CF. Uh, how many of you have ever heard about the Cloud Foundry? Oh, good. So uh, it's fine. It's OK. I'm going to talk about what the Cloud Foundry is. So because uh, uh, we are talking about the Docker uh, tonight, and I'm trying to cover, I'm giving about 10, 15 minutes to explain what the relationship between the Docker and the Cloud Foundry, and what each product does. You know, are they competitors? Um, we are having the, this topic of saying you know, they're working better together. In fact, you guys should change the term. See, instead of Docker, I will say container. But why is that? I, I don't think I have a time to go to the details. But anyway, it just happened Docker would be one of the very successful uh, containerization technology. I'm not sure you guys have uh, <coughs> seen this before, that Docker actually joined the Cloud Foundry Foundation during the May 2014. And now why they're doing that, again, uh, like I see, I'm trying to share with you how those two products or two initiative projects are working better together. So it's very difficult. It's going to be a very, very long discussion if we really wanted to go to a very, very detailed so technical deep dive. It will probably take you one or two days to, go to do that. So 10 minutes, I don't think I can do anything better. I will just rather to show a uh, 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 differences or uh, different ways in terms of how these two products provisioning applic applications to let you guys to see the differences and then you might go back and think about that. And uh, for those people who don't know what the Cloud Foundry is, the Cloud Foundry today is the uh, world leading open source uh, platform and services project, which is uh, supported by many big organizations. It's a pivotal initiative. In fact, it's an initiative started from the VMware days. Because the VMware and the EMC, they created the pivotal, then they passed this whole project to pivotal. And to today, in the community, you have IBM, you have HP. Um, there are a lot of them. So literally, it already become a, a de facto uh, platform and services, and be used by a lot of commercial product already. Um, and uh, as the platform as services, uh, first and foremost, are we all familiar with what the past is? Yes, yes, sure, cool. Um, OK, uh, in case you are not familiar with what the past is, eventually, if you are familiar with the, with the cloud, uh, they talk about the three uh, services models, the infra, the services, platform as services, and the software as the services. So eventually, uh, I guess, uh, if you don't know about the past, uh, as a uh, software services, at least you heard about the IAS, which is you know the VMware guys uh, and OpenStack guys are doing very successfully. They are able to uh, using the virtualization technology, actually putting a one soft software on top of the hardware. Therefore, today you are really can using the API to creating the virtual machines, to click the buttons, to getting a tons of the virtual machines and up and running. That's really give us a huge agilities allow us to moving faster and more <coughs> agile. And uh, uh, what the past trying to resolve? But yes, you are getting a virtual machine, so we're going to give you an OS. That's for the developers. It's not good enough, right? Because what you needed to do is, uh, after that, you will still need to install the, your uh, application server, database, etc. So how am I able to get in those things as a services? That's eventually what the problem then the uh, platform and services need to resolve. So in short, which is, means uh, trying to get uh, what does the platform does. Platform means uh, how do I build my applications by using what kind of language, what you are seeing here. So Cloud Foundry trying to see I'm a language frameworks agnostic, 
which means I can support in any sort of language. You just show me a uh, Java, show me a Java, show me a .NET thing files. You don't have to tell me that's Java, that's .NET. I'm able to scan in it and create that. And also, it manage the other, of course, it on top of VM and the containers. Therefore, it manage it. It's all kinds of applications, services, and applications. It's kind of like an abstraction layer on top of an IS. It's a play like a uh, like a cloud OS, if you will. Um, okay, I guess you guys already see Doctor. I think uh, that's a cool technology as a container. One of the uh, very successful. Uh, containerization technology. This is really cool. Today, frankly, when I start to evaluating, I'm not really, you know, every day go deep dive about what the Docker is, but today I already have a habit when I go to certain evaluating certain new tools, new project, I'll first and foremost to see, I used to, you know, using a VM Fusion, create a virtual machine, I install all the, my stuff there, but today I already have a habit, hey, do you support Docker? So I can quickly use a Docker run and can boost up a tons of the, you know, all the application up and running to do my evaluations. So that's quite cool to me. But however, um, what we just now already see, which is I'm gonna show again later, but however, Docker alone is uh, cool, but it's not that cool because uh, uh, when we are going to provisioning uh, multiple uh, layers applications, you think about the real world. Uh, just now, I think a, a few questions already pop up to see, okay, when I go to my uh, production environment, uh, what I'm going to do, and uh, because people start to relate to what they are doing in the actual uh, world. Um, and also, today, we all know, I, I, I guess probably the largest Docker user should be Google, right? So my colleague, and, and if you guys attended the previous session, definitely heard about the Sergio talk about the Google run billions of Dockers in their data centers. So every Monday, they, are, they launch about the millions of Dockers. So then just now, you're, you guys already see how the Docker actually creating the Docker file, trying to link up the database and the things are together. If we are going to do all those things uh, manually, that's a nightmare. So because... Uh, in the real uh, production environment, when you're going to provisioning uh, applications, you need a router, load balancer, multiple applications, uh, services, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going to really creating tons of them, but this one doesn't work for you. If you really have to jump in to see, okay, uh, which are the pods I need to map, which are the, you know, uh, which, you know, these are the one of the, you know, I, 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 I get it from the uh, Docker Composed uh, site, which is how they're going to provisioning a very simple web application plus a, a <coughs> database. So you have to specify which are the pod number you need to get the Docker to use and which are the web servers up and running on which pod and how you're going to link it to a database. So you as a developers, you really have to write in the script and doing this. And... Uh, Will that be something you wanted to do? Or like I mentioned in the beginning as a pass, literally I wanted to just see as a developer, I just want to see, okay, here's my source code. Deploying it for me, and I don't care how. I don't care how you're gonna do that. Don't tell me I still have to uh, think about the load balancer, think about how many application instances, and how do I do fill over, which are the pod number I need to uh, bind to, etc. So those are the details I don't want to deal with. So today I think I don't have to, I think, I think most of you guys should already heard about the 12 factors, right? This happened to be a principle. So it was a good practice all the way. It just, uh, today people are talking about the cloud native applications uh, it just happened to, you know, when we look back to the school practice, they make a lot of sense for cloud native applications. And if you really look at uh, probably a few of them, but when you really look at this pod binding, and if you look back at uh, what we showed just now, so when we are in the cloud environment, we really don't want our applications, like what just now he mentioned, uh, you are now have a catalyst instead of pet. You won't be forever getting a physical IP physical host, physical file system, uh, physical port number, etc. they're always existing and not gone. They can die anytime. 
if your applications really have a dependency on those uh, fixed resources, you're going to have a problem. Um, so with that be said, so for you to really jump in to manage all the details about the pod, etc., you will be facing the problems. And uh, how do we do with the Cloud Foundry? First and foremost, Cloud Foundry are really working, we are working very well with the, our own seed Docker. In fact, what we are using is another uh, container technology, which is the, uh, we call it, the first generation was Walden, now it's called it Garden. Garden is nothing, it's just to fork all the Docker codes and write something on top of that. So, uh, and we just hide all the details, all those uh, ugly stuff uh, from all the developers. So today, when you're going to creating a web applications, look at this uh, uh, YAM configurations. What you're going to do is, uh, okay, tell me uh, your application's name and uh, tell me how much memory you wanted and uh, tell me how many instances you want it. Because I can have a my load balancer, you can tell me multiple instances, so I can help you to wound it together, and I can just tell me where the wildfire is. You don't even have to tell me this is a Java applications or .NET applications, and uh, then you're going to uh, just uh, tell me the, the the database instances name. You don't have to tell me IP, port number, etc. That's uh, like a uh, environment of variables. You just pass it to me, and the later the platform. We're going to inject whatever information you need for that database. Include your credentials, include the IP, include the port number, etc. So that's what the Cloud Foundry allows you to do on top of a container technology. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I'm not going to run it again, but I'm just uh, do one thing just now, because just now I, I don't want to waste the time, therefore I run it. Um, or maybe I'll, I forgot whether I delete that or not. So maybe I'll just do it, push it again, because uh, these are the yam farm I'm having, exactly the same thing. So what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, do a push. So subsequently, Cloud Foundry is going to take the manifest file. And of course, you already passed me the wildfire, so Cloud Foundry will take it and upload it to Cloud Foundry environment and do all the stuff for you. And uh, uh, very soon, you're going to see one thing called build pack stuff. So that's uh, Lenny wrong. I'm going to come back again. So OK. These are the Docker. Eventually, you will really start from, you know, you know when you create the Docker files, uh, literally, there are the uh, Ubuntu, et cetera. Then you're going to define your runtime, define whatever you want to run inside it. But what the CF actually did was uh, they create something called build packs. Build pack is nothing. It's just a Ruby language creating uh, uh, softwares, which is can take over whatever you pass to it. It start to do the scanning to see, oh, this is a wildfire and uh, they check a few features, oh, this is Java. So now I'm going to give you uh, the GDK you need it. It give you the Tomcat you need it, and then going to assembly as a, a master template installed somewhere. So subsequently, if you want me to have a multiple instances, I always take this master template and creating the instances for you, and join to the same load balancer, give you the same URL, and if you want to bind to the database, I'm going to bind to the database. Of course, binding is another step we're going to explain later. But build packs eventually really allows you to do those, you know, it's help you to uh, do all those jobs. Um, and uh, these are the service binding concept, which is uh, just now, as a beginning, uh, when you see the Docker just now, you really have to literally, you have to really run that kind of uh, um, image, actually having the uh, MySQL. I know, I get five minutes. And uh, then, uh, so what the Cloud Foundry literally does is if you really just now notice uh, uh, the manifest file I showed you earlier. So there was uh, a, once I push every application over there, 
I can literally uh, point it to a MySQL database. So MySQL, you can use command line, or you also can use the UI tools to pre-create that kind of a, uh, database instances are over there. And subsequently, you can register all the metadata into the service broker. And uh, all those application instances eventually all go to the service broker. And uh, through the service broker, that kind of parameters, which is MySQL, the variables, and then uh, he gets to know all the parameters he needed. It's just uh, in the runtime. This really brings the benefit when you're really moving to the cross the dev environment, the UAT productions. You don't have to worry about the actual with IP, the port number credentials is. And that's what we wanted to achieve. Um, so that's Cloud Foundry. I think right now, let me go back to the demo I, I just run. So you can see the output now. So just now I do that push. So the push literally upload this uh, warfa and subsequently uh, the build pack start working and they can start to prepare the GDK environment for you and they're going to assign the memory and they're going to give you the Tomcat, etc. Now all the way to binding the database and the instance up and running. And if you now come back to the Cloud Foundry UI, so I created that Spring Music. I guess I need to do a refresh. Directly from the console. Yeah. Okay, these are the one I just created. You can see my application up and running. If you really go into this uh, uh, Spring Music itself, there's a console. And uh, of course, just now when I do push, I can specify how many instances I want. And uh, subsequently, I still can do this things, I let them to boost up you know, more instances. If you're really having the kind of more and more customer to come in, you can really do this in the real time. And the meanwhile, of course, when you're creating the new instances, your existing application is still running. And after the, those instances are coming, they just uh, join to that load balancer automatically. And you can change the memory. And then from here, of course, you have the console. And then this part probably interesting because this is exactly the database I bind just now. And if you really come to the environment variables, you can see all this uh, information eventually going to be injected by the platform itself. So with that, I think I guess I already explained what the relationship between the containers and the platform. And if you are asking ask me just now, the a few guys are asking, oh, uh, is it the uh, containers already be using in some production environment? Yes. Not not only Google those guys, but with Cloud Foundry and with the commercial uh, pivotal product, it literally already running inside a lot of big names. Of course, today I'm not representing the company until talking about the product. But what I can share with you is uh, really a lot of companies are currently using. And uh, just now, I like the other question. One guy was asking, hey, what the container means to me? I think I like this, uh, I like this uh, uh, lovely uh, cartoon. And uh, this probably, you know, when you look at uh, this, this is probably the earlier way. How are we going to assemble our application together? And uh, today, using the container, this is how do you do things. So, any question for me? No? Oh, you guys are uh, 9 o'clock already anyway. I run out of my time. Uh, if you're really interested, if you really find these things are interesting. So, in fact, what I'm currently having is, uh, uh, let me just log, uh, log out. So, there is something called PWS. It's, uh, uh, it's like an AWS. <laughs> it's uh, provided by Pivotal. It's a so Cloud Foundry actually uh, run on top of uh, Amazon. So you can come here and register having a free account. Then you just uh, download uh, the command line tools just now I was using. Because uh, 
there's a CF command line tools you need to download. Of course, once you go to that website to register, you can get all the tutorial on how you're going to do that. You need to download this uh, command line tools. And the register, do a login. Of course, I see a lot of steps. I need to do login as well. So after I log in, I can start to pushing all my applications over there. And uh, of course, today, not only the public services, but we do actually offering an enterprise services. You really can set up this into your on-premise data center if you happen using the vSphere or OpenStack uh, uh, running inside your on-premise uh, data center. OK, question? No? Docker, we can set up a own registry for our enterprise. Yep. But for the whole policy, you have any feature like this? That's what I mentioned just now. Once you are having this uh, wire file coming to tell me you want to bind to a uh, node, once your wire file coming, so what it does, the, piece, uh, the cloud foundry have a build pack stuff, it starts to scanning. We call it compile. Compile is not see your source code to compile to binary. What compile means, uh, we're going to assembly a zip files, literally it's zip files. It can take your wire files, it can take Tomcat, it can take the GDK, etc. Then creating that kind of like an image equivalent uh, stuff. We already automated the steps. And then once we created that, we test that it works. Then we're storing inside the answer your question. We do have a, uh, 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 you can see it's a, uh, Blob storage, etc. We have a kind of like a storage in the platform. You can store that image over there. And uh, uh, now, I guess uh, uh, to just uh, further uh, for this point, in fact, you, you have advantage by doing this because uh, you in the actual production environment, you won't, you don't want to give the permission to developers who can just anyhow to create a Docker file to see, oh, these are the Python 1.2 or these are Python which version. OK, I guess I answered your question. So uh, there's uh, some announcement. If you are very interested in the Cloud Foundry, we can definitely take this offline. So we can have a discussion. OK, uh, pass you back. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>